We talked about inner apartment metaphor. Now let's talk about the inner process communication. I will try to explain the mechanics of how two processes from two devices far away could communicate with each other. And you don't need any prerequisite about operating systems, IPC, or networking knowledge for this video. I will try to keep the explanation as simple as possible towards the main building blocks and the overall picture of inner process communication and socket programming. This video aims not to leave behind the absolute newbies to socket programming. But if you only need to know the short version of the story, you can only watch the next minute or so and skip the rest. So let's get started. In short, two applications could communicate with each other using a special interface named Socket API. What Socket API does is that it calls and utilizes the two types of connections implemented inside the kernel of your operating system. The TCP connection, which establishes a two-channel stream for infinite sequence of bytes between two applications. And the UDP connection, which is for communicating and sending a single and individual packet that might even get lost. The operating system hides all the complexity and abstracts away the whole infrastructure and the communication protocol behind the socket API. All right, now that was the short version of the story and you can jump to the code and do some socket programming. But if you need some more insight to what is happening behind the curtains that will absolutely help you to do the socket programming better, I encourage you to stay with me to the end of this video. Now, let's get back to the beginning where applications were only lines of codes. The story of an application always begins from the source code. You pick a language, write some code, compile it, and build the application, right? So the applications could be for any purpose, but they need a host to run within them. Although the hardwares and devices provide the appropriate environment and infrastructure for running softwares, but you cannot simply run your application directly on some machine. Every device has a special software that hosts the application and provides infrastructure and capabilities, and that is, of course, operating system. The operating system, like the janitor from our building metaphor, abstracts away all the underlying infrastructure and hardware. It provides capabilities and services implemented in its kernel, and all the applications are a bunch of machine codes from the operating system's point of view. It just provides a box, you know, a structure named process and runs your application within it. It is like the cassette player with multiple slots that uh, plays the notes on your cassette and provides the hardware needed. If you remember the building metaphor, it didn't matter for the janitor that what were the nationalities of the residents of the apartments. So all he cared was to provide the same capabilities to all apartments. Just like the same, here in operating system, it doesn't matter that what was the source code of the application or what was the language that it was written with. Because at the end of the day, the application will be a bunch of compiled machine codes running inside a process. Now, I know, and you might argue that why all these explanation and emphasis? Why we have not started the main story yet, but I've seen newbie programmers that look at the server and client application mysteriously, while 
these two types of applications have the same capabilities provided to them. Okay, enough the foundation story. Now let's cut to the chase to the communication part. So each of these two applications are running within their own space and memory allocated by the operating system to their processes. Now, if inside a single application, for example, the left application, if inside that application, the building blocks and the structures want to communicate and share stuff, they could easily do so because they are inside the same process and inside the same memory. Like for example, let's say that this application is a Java application or a C application and the two classes or two functions inside it wants to call each other and pass data. They could easily do this by using their languages capabilities. But what if these two applications running inside their own processes want to communicate and share data? Of course, they cannot rely on their programming languages capabilities this time because they are running within their own processes and their own sandbox. So like the building metaphor, they have to go to the janitor, to the host. And here in our example, they have to ask the operating system. Like we said before, the operating systems abstract away the hardware by providing services and capabilities on top of them. Like if an application within a process wants to modify a file or create a file in the storage drives, it asks the operating system to do so. And the programming languages provide the API interfaces that will call and utilize the services and the capabilities implemented inside the kernel of the operating systems. For example, for managing the file system, the implementation is inside the kernel, but the Java interface or a C header file is provided for you as a programmer to utilize and call those services. So back to the story of the communication of two processes. So two processes could use the file management API and ask their operating system to facilitate the sharing data and the communication. There are other means and services that could facilitate the inner process communication that are implemented inside your operating system's kernel. And the processes could use them again by adding and importing the interface or the header files, and they could use and utilize those capabilities. But all these IPC uh, methods and capabilities that we have talked so far, like the file management API or the queue or signal or other stuff, are most of the time dedicated to the specific operating system that the application is running on top of that. But the biggest shortcoming of the IPC methods that we have talked so far is not that they are operating system specific, but it is that they are only for providing the communication between the two processes within the same machine. But what if two processes living far away from each other inside different devices and with different operating systems want to communicate? Like let's say an Android application within your mobile wants to communicate with a server application within a PC far away. The applications, again, cannot rely on themselves for making this communication possible. So they have to ask their operating systems to facilitate and abstract away this communication. Now, of course, we need some physical equipment, some intermediary infrastructure that could uh, connect the machines to each other and form a network of devices. 
Within this network, all the devices have to be addressable by each other. And for that purpose, they use some special address named IP address. Now that the two machines and devices could address each other and could connect to each other, the only thing left to do for this communication is to be able to address a process running within some remote machine. So in the building metaphor, as you remember, all the apartments were numbered statically in advance. But here, the processes acquire a number when they want to communicate. But let's see how. Now, before answering that question that how a process from within an operating system could address another process within another operating system, let's flash back to our uh, building metaphor. There, if you remember, we had two types of communications that the apartments and the peers could choose from. One of the communication types was the connection-oriented communication that could establish a peer-to-peer two-way channel for infinite sequence of uh, data with 100% delivery and order guarantee. The other one was connection-less communication that the peers and the apartments were involved with the packets that might get lost or arrive out of order. Well, here we have exactly the same protocols. The connection-oriented protocol here is named TCP or Transmission Control Protocol. And the connection-less protocol is named UDP for short or User Datagram Protocol. So as you have guessed, uh, these two protocols, the TCP and the UDP, are implemented inside your operating system's kernel, no matter the type of your operating system. And like anything else, if you want to utilize them and call those services, you have to import some special interface and API in your source code named socket API. Now the word protocol has been chosen wisely here because the two different operating systems should know and pre-agree on a set of common languages to make the communication possible. Like our building metaphor that the two janitors, although they were far away from each other, maybe from different countries with different cultures, but they had agreed on a set of common protocols to facilitate the connection-oriented and connection-less uh, communication types. Now, back to the question that we left unanswered. We know how to address a device or machine within this network, but how to address a process within a device. Now, inside each protocol, there are almost 65,000 empty slots or open ports. The UDP has its own open ports and the TCP has its own separate 65,000 ports. So when a process wants to listen for an incoming connection, it grabs and occupies an open port from either the TCP or the UDP based on its decision on the type of the communication that it wants to use. In this example, this process grabs the port number three on the TCP protocol for listening to the incoming connections that will come on this port. Hence, this listening process could be addressed by other processes far away on different devices. First with its uh, device machine, which is the IP address, and then with its port number, which is port number three on the TCP line. Now, 
Then a process grabs an open port for listening to the incoming connections. Multiple simultaneous connections could come from everywhere and enter the same process by the same open port. So it's like that the TCP is multiplexing the incoming wires through the same endpoint. Now, if some process, some other process, wants to connect and communicate to this process, uh, listening on port number three on the TCP line, it should first uh, grab an open port on its side and it should occupy it first. Cause although this process knows the IP address and the open port number three on the line TCP, and it could address this process, but also this process on this side that is listening for the incoming connection after the connection being established, it should be able to also communicate and send stuff. So it should also know the, uh, the port number that the origin process, this peer, was actually establishing the connection. Now, at this point, the operating system utilizes and uses the IP layer within its kernel to use the network infrastructure and enter the destination machine and its kernel. And because there is a process that is listening on port number three, so the operating system plugs the incoming socket to one of the multiplexed slots and it enters the destination process. Now at this point, a peer-to-peer -peer connection has been established successfully that could facilitate the communication and sharing of the data. At this point, it doesn't matter that who was the origin and who was the destination or who was listening and who established the connection. All that matters for the processes is that now a two-way channel has been established between them that they could use both simultaneously to transfer and stream an infinite stream and sequence of bytes to each other. So the words client and server are not good fits for here because in this end-to-end -end and peer-to-peer -peer communication, the both endpoints have the same rights and capabilities. But the fact that makes one of them to be called a server or the other one to be referred as the client is in the way that the applications are using this connection. Okay, now let's talk about the nature of the data that is being shared between the two processes. So as we said before, in a TCP connection, after the connection being established, all that the processes at the two endpoints are being involved with is an input by the stream and an output by the stream. And so we talked about that two-channel and two-way channel communication. And they are assured, these two processes are assured that these two channels and byte streams are connected to each other and everything that this process writes, the other process will access to it and will read it in its input stream. And everything that this process writes to its output stream, it will read, this process will read it and will access it in its input stream. So the operating systems as the middlemen are the ones that are involved with grabbing those sequence of incoming sequence of bytes, chopping them into small packets and numbering them. And the operating system at the other side, after receiving those packets, it first grabs them and puts them in the right order and then unwraps them and fit the content, the sequence of bytes to the uh, process. 
So as we said before, the TCP connection does not engage the processes with packaging and arrival guarantees or ordering issues. And they provide an abstracted away interface that make the uh, worries of the processes go away. All the processes are involved with is just with this two-way channel, the infinite sequence of bytes and the stream of bytes that they can send to each other. So before talking about the nature of the UDP connection, uh, I should mention that, as you might have guessed, the other process inside the same machine, not another process in, in a remote device, some other device, uh, some other process inside the same machine could actually use the same mechanism and use the TCP or UDP to communicate with another process within the same machine. And all it has to do is just to uh, give the destination IP address as some special address named local host. And at this point, the, what operating system will do is that it will loop back the connection inside itself and it will look for a listening port and listening process within itself. And it will plug the so socket to one of its own processes. Now, let's talk about the UDP communication. Now, as you can see, with the UDP communication, there is no sign of a peer-to-peer -peer connection. So in this case, these are the processes that are involved in uh, packaging and chopping and ordering the packets. And they are themselves that are involved uh, with the uh, arrival issues and ordering issues and, and all those guarantees. So when you use a UDP uh, communication, it is like that you are telling the operating system to mine its business and don't get involved with the packaging and the guarantees. So in this case, all that the operating systems are doing is that they grab the packet from the process as is, and they pass it and relay it to the network, and they deliver it to the other side. And the operating system at the destination just grabs the packet and again, it delivers the packet as is to the destination process. You know, it doesn't unwrap it. It doesn't get involved. Now, you might argue that why bother using the UDP channel and UDP communication while we could use the TCP with all that goodies like the uh, mental model of an infinite stream of bytes that could make all of your worries go away, you know? it could guarantee the arrival at the right order. But there are some applications that actually use and need the performance that the UDP has over the TCP. And they actually accept and tolerate some percentage of packet drops and out of order delivery issues. Like for example, with the voice calls and video calls, you know, it doesn't matter to transfer all the data sequentially and in a guaranteed 100% way. All the two parties and the two endpoints uh, expect is a connection that will actually transfer uh, a good amount of data and, and voice and video to the other side that the other side could uh, understand the message. But most of the time, it is the TCP connection that is used for most of the scenarios. In the next session, we will start using a socket API to connect the applications and share stuff.